Oh, hey guys. I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. I wish I'd known you were here. Uh, I was just hanging out, having a little exercise with my sick ring, uh, which uh, I don't think it kind of reminds me of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, come sit down with me. I'll tell you all about it. There's this great scene in the Lord of the Rings where uh, Frodo and Gandalf are just having a rest, having a little chat on their way to throw the One Ring of Power into Mount Doom in Mordor to defeat Sauron once and for all. Um, they're just hanging out and they're chatting. And Frodo remarks to Gandalf, I wish it need not have happened in my time. Which is, he's basically just saying, I wish all these terrible things hadn't happened, right? And Gandalf responds, so do I. And so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. And I love that scene. I think that's great. I'm so glad they included it in the movies, which you should go watch if you haven't seen them. I love that scene because it's so true, right? There are a lot of things that are going on that no one, no one wants to happen, right? Especially now, right? We've got a virus ravaging the earth. Uh, people are all stuck indoors, stuck at home when they'd rather be out doing anything else. Uh, people are losing jobs, all sorts of terrible things. And no one wants any of these things to happen. They just kind of happened, right? Not necessarily anyone's fault. It's just, it happens. And even if that wasn't happening, you know, bad things happen all the time. People get in car accidents. Uh, people get cancer. Who knows? There are just all sorts of bad things that happen that no one would wish upon themselves or anyone else. Um, and I love this quote because it's true. No one wants these things, but they happen. And I love this. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. So these things, I hate to tell you, bad things are going to happen to you, right? It's inevitable. Sorry. I, if you didn't know that before now, I hate to be the one to break the news to you. But bad things are going to happen, and you're going to have to decide, okay, now what? And I don't really have an answer for why, what you should do when those bad things happen. Fortunately, the Bible does, right? So let's check out what the Bible has to say. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 and 15, right? I think this is just a perfect thing. What should you do when bad things are happening? Here we go. Starting in verse 14. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. Then she got up and prepared a meal for him. I love that passage. That's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And I know it doesn't seem that great on the surface, but when you dig, indeed, when you dig into it, it gets really great, right? So Jesus arrives at uh, Peter's house, and he says, Mother-in-law, she's sitting there sick, touches her hand, fever's gone. That's incredible, right? And again, Jesus heals people on the, all the time, so why is this so important? Well, it's important because of what Peter's mother-in-law did next. She got up, and she made him dinner. She prepared a meal for him. She served him, basically, right? She didn't choose for a fever to come upon her. She didn't choose for that terrible thing to happen, but it did. And so what can she do? She can serve the Lord, right? Uh, she served him. Not only did she serve him, she served him exactly where she was with what she had. And really, that's all that any of us can do. Bad things are happening. And I know it's easy to sit back and be like, well, you know, terrible things are happening. I'm stuck at home. I'm going to go play video games. Video games are great. That's literally what I was doing when you guys got here, right? I'm no disrespect to video games. But what else can you do, right? What can you do to serve the Lord right now where you are with what you have? What can you do? It's like, well, um, I, for one, can make videos talking about how great God is and how you should serve him. Here we go. So that's a good example. What else can you do? Well, you can worship him. You can read your Bible. You can write a song about him. Tell, you know, your friends. Have a Zoom chat. Reach out to them. Say, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Just because you're at home doesn't mean God wants you to stop serving him. God is great, and he deserves to always be served. No matter the situation, no matter how bad things are, you should always, always seek the Lord, right? In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. In all your ways. Doesn't matter if you're stuck at home. Doesn't matter if there's a virus. Doesn't matter anything. Serve God where you are with what you've got. That's it. And I think that that story, you know, it seems it's very short. It's two verses. 
easy to run right past it, but I think it's important. Why? Two reasons. One, it's in the Bible, <laughs> right? God doesn't accidentally put things in the Bible. He put it in deliberately because he thought this is important. It needs to be in there. And not only is it in there one time, it's in there three times. It's in three of the Gospels. Three times that story is brought up. So it's clearly important. Do what you can where you are with what you've got. Serve the Lord with all your might. That's all I've got for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed it. Any excuse to discuss Lord of the Rings, whether it's with a person or a camera, I'm all about it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to working out. You don't get to looking like this on accident. Okay. <laughs> all right.